day 15 here and this is effectively going to be the last time you see any waterproofing in this series of videos. Um, we've got our second coat has gone on and cured now. I'm walking on it uh, on our overscreed system. So let's have a little bit uh, more of a look here because this is our final chance, final quality control for our, our main system, especially in our shower here. Our water needs to shed to the drain at the membrane over that level. So we wanna make sure this is really on point and hopefully we never have to use that backup that is under the screen. So let's go into the details here and have a, a little bit of a look. We'll start off with this drain flange in the middle. We've talked about this um, a good number of times now, so we'll get right in there and have a close look. Now, you can see that this drain flange here is the one on the surface. And then down here, a little bit further, right about where I'm pointing there, that's where our second flange is making this a double flange system. Now, our waterproofer has gotten a bit carried away. They were supposed to just connect the overscreed membrane, which is our blue, onto this flange. But instead, you can see blue gone even further down here, um, a little bit too far and connected onto our flange below. Now, the problem with that is we used to have a gap here and we wanted to have that gap between those two flanges so that in the event that water ever did breach our primary membrane here, it was able to come out between those flanges. Um, but the good news is we're not ever gonna expect that to be a huge volume of water. And there actually are some breaks in continuity around that I can feel underneath the flange here. Um, so water will still be able to um, escape there. So we'll probably leave that seal in place just because it will also stop water from potentially trying to backflow up between those flanges. Not that I think that's going to happen either, but worth discussing in theory. So that's our flanges there. They're looking pretty good. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is this crosshatch pattern. We've talked about this before. I'm hoping I'm in a really good spot here where it's really showing that reflection there. And you can see crosshatch pattern there and this way, right? So. I can tell by looking at this that our first coat went down this way. Actually, no, I take that back. Our first coat went down this way and then the second coat has gone this way, right? So that's really good. I can see this across the entire floor. I think you guys can as well. So that's really good. However, when we get over to our wall to floor junction here, you can see that our crosshatch pattern stops. Um, now, not that I would expect a waterproofer to do a brush stroke in this direction and then come back and do brush strokes like this, but I can really see quite a distinctive pattern on what's gone down with our second layer here. And it does really look like only the main flat floor area was coated which is a little bit disappointing, right? Because waterproofing needs to be full thickness that's achieved with two coats, not only in the flat area, but probably more importantly, on your vertical junctions here as well. And I really just can't see that second coat here. It does feel robust in that they've got a really nice solid bond breaker in the corner there. So love that. But from what I can see here, there wasn't a second coat applied detailing wise. It was just a, a roll it out on the floor sort of thing and and that'll be good enough so it's something to keep an eye on uh, your detailing is often your point of failure not your main floor area unless you have a crack in it and on that note of detailing I'm going to take you down and hopefully you can see our water stop angle there now what we'd expect to see is that to be almost covered with our upturn of our blue waterproofing membrane being our primary and we would also want to see a healthy corner fillet there just to allow any sort of movement accommodation or, or whatnot between those two substrates. So um, a little bit disappointing that the rest of it was done so well around the perimeter and then this was just uh, missed. I do understand that there is a little bit of a risk with the tiles there, right? Like you need to be able to butt your tile pretty much right into that water stop angle and you don't want a sealant clashing with that. I get that, but 
you can still put something in there, get a nice curved radius on it, it's not gonna conflict with it. So probably a little bit of a touch up needed there. Now, with our drain here, this is where our strip drain is going to sit. Um, our underfloor heating, like I said, will be running all the way through into this area. And I'd say this is a very well prepared substrate. Looks very nice and clean and it's gotten some very nice consistent membrane. Always a good idea to make it as thick as possible at any of these change in substrates, change in directions there. So this is where we're going to be getting 99% of our shower water. We want to make sure it's as robust as possible, right? Like it doesn't quite make sense to have this detail the same or maybe even less than our wall to floor junctions over the other side there. So it's always a good idea to think on uh, risk based, right? If you're going to have 99% of your water here, maybe give it a little bit of extra attention. But all in all, I think this looks pretty solid there. Um, I'm relatively confident that it's going to, to stand up. And just as a recap for those that are looking at this wondering, why is the water stop angle missing or, or so on? We are going to have our underfloor heating running straight through here. So there is a water stop angle under here, buried in the screen. That is just how this design is gonna go because we really wanna have our underfloor heating running into the shower there. We want to have the benefit of that underfloor heating, drying out our bathroom, our shower area, every time this gets used. So yes, it's a compromise. Yes, it's out the box. Probably doesn't necessarily comply with the standards, but we've evaluated performance. We've discussed that before. So that's what we're doing. We are, of course, keeping this part in. It's a little bit high at the moment and it will be cut down to match the finished floor level because our glass panel is going to be sticking, sitting directly over the top here. So we're not gonna have any water trying to run out underneath that glass panel. And that's it, our walls haven't been touched. We have gone through all of these previously, had a look at the detailing. I'm pretty happy with all of that electrical work still to be done. I'm sure we'll see that in the future. But that's pretty much it. Now, one thing as a precursor for the future, see we've got our nice waterproofing membrane here. We are going to be hanging a vanity on this wall. What we don't want to do is just come and punch a heap of fixings straight through that wall there. So we've got a bit of a strategy on how we're going to do that and I'm going to show you that next time. So once again, final overview, make sure we capture a good record of everything that's happening and existing in this bathroom. And that's it for today. I'll see you guys tomorrow.